How can you choose your medical specialty? What are the highest paid doctor specialties? Which offer the best work-life balance? Which are the most popular with men versus women? This is a video that you're not gonna wanna miss because I'm gonna answer all of these questions and more so you can decide which specialty is best suited for you. Before we get started, hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an admissions associate at BMO Academic Consulting. Make sure you subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like us to help you get into medical school, make sure you click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Before we get into the highest paid doctor specialties, those that are the most popular and offer the best work-life balance, check out the timestamps in the description of this video if you're looking to navigate to specific sections throughout the video. First, I wanna discuss what factors you should consider in order to choose a medical specialty that's best suited for you. To start with, you'll need to think about what clinical or scientific areas you're interested in. You might find that you're interested in a specific organ system or a group of diseases. Depending on your answers, there's a large range of specialties that could be suitable, such as neurology, radiology, or even anesthesia. If, for example, you love surgery, then you could pursue orthopedics, plastic, or neurosurgery. If you have a variety of interests and are hoping for more of a mix between surgery and medicine, then you could consider ENT medicine, OBGYN, emergency medicine. If surgery isn't for you and you'd like to focus solely on medicine, then perhaps internal medicine, neurology, and psychiatry are options worth thinking about. When you're trying to decide on your interests, consider what type of activities you like engaging in and what kind of patient relationship you'd like to have. Internal and family medicine, for example, require long-term patient relationships, whereas something like radiology and pathology have almost no patient interaction. It's also important to think about the type of patient population that you want to work with and treat. Use your clinical training to think about the types of patient populations you would enjoy working with and different situations that you'll do well in based on both your training and your interests. For example, patients in internal medicine tend to be older and sicker with social and physiological challenges. Some may enjoy the complexity of this patient group while others may find it difficult. Those who choose to work in pediatrics should have a love of children and be skilled and effective at communicating and treating this group of individuals. Aside from your medical interests, you need to consider your personal requirements. Think about how much importance you place on work and life balance. Are you happy working long hours and would you be happy being on call? How much time do you want to spend on call or doing shift work? Is it really important to you to have weekends off? And lastly, how important are your potential earnings? Students who borrowed money come out of medical school with an average debt of $200,000, which is a hefty amount of money. So although you shouldn't make your decision based solely on salary, income is an important factor to consider to ensure that your medical education is reimbursed and that you can live happily on your salary. It's therefore important for you to gain as much information into specialties that you're interested in so you can make an informed decision that you'll be happy with. It's a good idea to join specialty interest clubs and organizations at school. Get in touch with physicians that work in the specialties that you're considering so that you can shadow them. This is crucial in understanding what the day-to-day -day will be like and it will also allow you to pick their brain during breaks to find out what they like about the specialty and what are the challenges and things that they wish they knew about the specialty before they invested in it. Finally, you need to be aware of specialty-related facts such as burnout rates, salaries, vacation days, and work-life balance. So I'm gonna help you with some of these, so let's get right into the top five highest paid doctor specialties. These average salaries are based on an AMA survey of more than 20,000 physicians across 29 different specialties, and the highest paying specialties are generally procedure-based. Procedure At number five, we have dermatology with an average annual salary of 392,000. Number four is radiology. Number three is cardiology at 408,000. Number two is orthopedics at 497,000. And finally, the highest paid doctor specialty is plastic surgery at a whopping 501,000 per year. That's over 100,000 more than dermatology, which was the fifth highest paid specialty. The three lowest paid doctor specialties are internal medicine, family medicine at 219,000, and pediatrics at 212,000. Now let's get into the three more popular specialties according to the National Resident Matching Program. 
Number three is hematology and oncology, which received 788 applicants for 553 positions. Number two is pulmonary disease and critical care medicine, which received 789 applicants for 568 positions. And the most popular is cardiovascular disease, which received 1,261 applicants for 894 positions. The top five highest paid states for physician compensation are Florida at 320,000, Arkansas, Nevada, and Alabama are in the middle of Oklahoma, which is at 337,000. So which are the best specialties for work-life balance? Well, according to an AMA study with over 15,000 physician participants, these five specialties reported the lowest rates of burnouts. Physicians who chose orthopedic specialties reported 34% burnout, ophthalmology reported 33% burnout, pathology had 32% burnout, Dermatology had as well 32% burnout, and the specialty with the lowest burnout is plastic surgery at only 23%. If you remember, this is also the highest paying specialty, so it's an interesting connection between the two. And lastly, which specialties are more common for women versus men? According to the AAMC, women made up 82.7% of residents in obstetrics and gynecology, 73% in pediatrics, and 70% in allergy and immunology. Men, on the other hand, made up 85.1% of residents in orthopedic surgery, 82.5% of residents in neurological surgery, and 73.8% of residents in thoracic surgery. All right, so that concludes another one of our videos. Which specialty are you thinking of pursuing? Let me know in the comments section. Hopefully overall you found this video helpful, so be sure to subscribe, like, and of course leave a comment if you have any questions that I didn't cover in today's video. If you'd like us to help you get into medical school, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Thanks again and see you next time.